Well, hello everybody. Jay Kladek again here with a, another update on the Eagle Test Shot I've been working on. As I'm recording this, it's, it's the end of the weekend of uh, Thanksgiving here in the States. Um, hoping to have this done by now, but there's a lot of work involved with this kit. Um, mainly with just dealing with a lot of seam cleanup and stuff, plus also I've been learning as I go, seeing how best to assemble this model. But I've gotten a lot of work done. I'd say I'm definitely at over the 50% uh, level for the amount of work that I've accomplished. But there's still a lot of stuff to go. But not much longer. Major final assembly should be done on this model. Um, <clears throat> as you can see, we got the engine section. I've got it all nice and assembled. The aft cage structure, there's only just the uh, big uh, X trusses that go on either edge. This one not quite as far along but these two detailed pieces go on that one. And I've also got the majority of the assembly done on the uh, passenger pod. Give me a moment and I'll go over each section individually just to show you where I'm at. Let's talk a little about the uh, cage structures that go on either side of the passenger module. Uh, specifically this is the front one, this is the rear one. Technically they are uh, both identical until you bolt on the uh, octagonal structure front and rear. This one I've already put on the um, little transition piece that the command module attaches to right there. This one, pretty much I have defined, is going to be the aft structure. As you can see, I've got a little more work done on it, mainly because, well, I primered the assembly, and then what I've done is I glued on the middle cage structure, as you can see, taking, taking my time, of course, to make sure everything is done properly. <coughs> a lot of the work was spent just cleaning up the seams on these parts of the cages. Uh, and there's a lot of seams to deal with. Granted, some of those seams are pretty well hidden once you've got the assembly done, but uh, since I am building this model potentially for entry in some contests and stuff, I just wanted to make sure that I got it as uh, close to flawless as I could. How well I did, I don't know. You'll see when, uh, when I got the model completely finished. As you can see, this structure is a little bit further along, partly because after assembly of that metal step. Next uh, the next is the addition of these pieces on either side like so and what they are is they're made up of two halves with um, looks like some uh, sort of pressure spheres probably for helium could be liquid oxygen I don't know it's a fictional spacecraft but essentially what they are is they are detail pieces so that when the X trusses gets put get put top and bottom and then the middle part of the cage gets put there just provides a nice little uh, bit of detail so you're not looking into a totally empty space um, just got these assembled today fair amount of work the only thing I haven't had there's like one little piece of conduit pipe that goes from here to heck I can't recall but I want to I want to inspect the uh, instructions a little bit more clearly to uh, see where it goes because just looking at them as it is right now it looks like it goes to nowhere and it's like no it's got to go somewhere but uh, then again maybe it does go nowhere I don't know but uh, that's where I'm at looking at the bottom part here and here I did a pretty good job of um, hiding the seam. This uh, particular cage structure I use the uh, the piece of thin strip styrene to cover up the seam. Um, as I suspected though, just going ahead and uh, taking care of the seam as normal worked just fine on the second one, although I did put a uh, kind of like a little standoff on the inside made up of uh, three pieces of cut down uh, styrene rod in order to kind of spread that floor flatter and it it did the job pretty happy with how these have turned out thus far 
and using the plastic weld glues is doing a good job of uh, basically taking care of the seams on all these little structures. And overall I'm pretty happy with what I'm seeing. Uh, what I may do before I shoot the uh, next layer of primer on is I might go in, do a couple of quickie shots of uh, black spray paint before I do the next white layer. That way kind of gives a little bit of hidden depth. Well, here you can see the engine section attached to the aft cage structure. Um, really like how this is fitting together. Everything ba pretty much almost snaps in. One thing that's really nice is uh, it means I'll be able to um, paint this model in sub-assemblies and only have to work with a small sub-assembly such as either the cage structure or the engine module. Um, that comes in really handy, especially when you're doing tight detail painting and decaling. That way, see if I'm only focused on this three or four inches of engine section, I don't have to worry about the other 16 to 18 inches of model hanging off on the other side. Now granted, there is some detail work, detail paint work that can be done best when the model is fully assembled, but doing it in uh, smaller sub-assemblies and just plugging everything together in the final assembly results in a better looking model overall in my opinion for the most part. Taking a look at the engine assembly I must say this is definitely a work of art on the part of round two. Um, checking the reference photos, specifically uh, the ones that um, David Sisson shot of uh, the restoration of the Eagle One studio model which this kit is most closely based on. Uh, they did a very good job on the plumbing. Um, looking at it, let me get the engine bells off here. Looking at it up close, I would say that uh, Brian Johnson and Nick Alder's assembly team were probably most inspired by the appearance of the old uh, Frank Whittle axial flow turbojet engine that was designed in the 1940s. Um, I mean, it's interesting. You got a conduit pipe going up here to this sphere, then over to here, then you got the pipe going down here, then you got another one starting up, coming up and around, going in, and etc. etc. I mean, basically, these two these two fuel tank plumbing sections are direct mirror of these two fuel tank plumbing sections. Um, took a little bit of work to figure out how to plug everything in properly, but the results speak for themselves. I'm very happy with it. Uh, about the only thing I had to do a little additional work on was um, there's a piece of sheet styrene stuck between these two uh, ball halves right here because uh, by accident, uh, round two accidentally sent me two of the exact same ball halves rather than so basically I was short of one of the long ball halves because the way it works is you've got a long ball half and then a short ball half and both of them plug together to make the perfect sphere with this little ridge on there but I was able to work around that and uh, come up with one that was exact same dimensions and everything fit together just nice but um, this front plate here is still I can still take that piece off, which will come in really handy when I get in there to primer and uh, paint all these assemblies. Um, only thing that I heard of that they're doing, I don't know how well you can see it, but um, there should have been like a little flange molded onto this octagonal structure here that these, uh, that these reinforcement that these cross member pipes plug into to kind of transition it a little better. And I'm not sure how I'm going to tackle that or I might just leave it as is because once everything is together the structure looks fine. Plus also I mean it, it would be nice to have a couple elements on there so that people can tell, a tell at a glance that what I built was a test shot and not a uh, final final production sample. One thing I will say that will definitely be nice uh, for those of you getting the production kits is um, 
it's being molded in two colors. Uh, gray for the engine bells and some of the smaller assemblies and white for the majority of the of the model. That way primering and pre-shading you don't have to use as many uh, you don't have to use as many layers of paint as I'm going to have to in order to cover up all this gray. Even though it's a light shade of gray and everything should come out looking pretty nice. In fact um, James Small using a, a second generation test shot did do an assembly of an entire eagle without without paint just to show that it was possible to build it and his model looks very good at a glance. Of course uh, your best results are, are achievable with paint but um, well, we'll see. Almost to the paint stage though as you can see. Let's talk a little bit about the uh, the passenger module. Done some assembly on that. Uh, the bottom part, one thing that's really nice is this uh, structure right here is actually separately molded from the floor. It's not molded on like it is on the uh, little 12 inch versions. Um, I just popped this piece on just to show you how it fits. A lot of the little holes that you see on the bottom are for uh, smaller detail parts and then you got the major ones such as the, uh, the landing feet and the uh, VTOL engine bells. The thing that's nice is looking at a lot of those detail parts I can actually recognize where a lot of them came from. Um, there's a couple of halves to the uh, escape tower for, a, for an Airfix Saturn V there. Um, a couple other pieces that I can't quite identify yet. Um, but it'll look really good when done. It'll be uh, accurate to the, uh, the first studio model from early in the production. On top here, I have not glued on the, uh, the center part of the roof yet, simply because I've still got to finish painting and uh, popping in the windows. And uh, if your plans are to do a Rescue Eagle, it's probably not a bad idea to pre-mask those windows, put the tape on and cut them, cut the tape and pop the windows in. That way it's there, it's done, you don't have to worry about demasking them or putting the masks on until after you paint on the white and the red stripes. So, uh, one thing I will make mention of, you notice there's two little holes at the top of the assembly and those correspond to those little oblong holes I was telling you about a video or two back where uh, a screw goes down in there and basically locks the uh, the passenger pod to the cage the cage spine uh, what I may do since uh, I believe you're going to be provided with uh, self-tapping screws for that but what I'm probably going to do with mine is actually since I don't have the original screws what I'm probably going to end up doing is um, getting a set of uh, like a fine machine thread screw and a corresponding nut and I'll just go ahead and glue a nut to each side and then chop out the bulkhead section so that the nut clears and that way when I put the screws in through the spine I know that I won't have a, uh, a fear of accidentally stripping out the, uh, the screws that hold the, uh, the passenger pod on. And if it works, I'll end up doing that with uh, all my passenger pods, or however I paint them. I've also been thinking about maybe doing one of these pods up in uh, orange, like uh, the VIP Eagle that uh, Commissioner Simmons came to Moonbase Alpha on in the very first episode of Space 1999. Uh, the pod assembles really nice. You've got essentially the floor two lower edge sections, the middle wall section, and then you've got these upper pieces where the windows go that fit right on top. As a result, there are a few seams uh, to clean up on the edges here, but all the major details are recessed in, so using a block sander to uh, clean that off should not be a problem. My example does have a little bit of sink mark issues, which I'm going to have to fill and take care of when I do the block sanding, but 
it shouldn't be that tough. The only thing you got to be careful of is that you don't accidentally sand in an ever so slight curve into a flat surface. But I figure if I'm careful I should be able to do that. Um, I suppose if one wanted to, it's got enough internal space to uh, mount a passenger interior, although in my case I'm not going to do that. Might be nice, but I'm going to save that for a future project. Um, only real seam that I had to clean up was uh, at the transition point between the uh, middle section and the bottom here. This little area from the flat point, it goes flat and then it kind of curves down and wraps around on the bottom. And there is a little bit of an edge there. It took a little bit of work to make sure that was nice and crisp and ever so slightly rounded and not too uneven. Just be aware that uh, could be an issue when you build yours, although hopefully they will have cleaned up the uh, edges of the two parts a little so you can get a nice clean uh, crisp surface. Overall I'm uh, pretty happy with what I'm seeing. And so that's where I am for right now. A lot of work has been done, but there is still a lot of work to go. Although I do definitely see the light at the end of the tunnel on this one. Um, command module I haven't really started major work on other than just taping it together, mainly because I'm still debating whether or not I want to light it. I think I probably will. Um, what I'm probably going to end up doing is if I can get a couple, get a, a AAA battery holder to fit in there, I'll uh, conceal like a push button switch under one of the uh, little sensor dome assemblies that goes around the pod. Probably the one on the bottom, that way all I have to do is just go touch and we'll just turn on the lights. Eagle didn't have very many lights, so as long as I illuminate the astronauts in the cockpit, that's all I really need to do. But the jury is still out on this. Uh, now, when are we going to see this kit? I know it's the end of November and we have not seen it. Well, there was a little delays that Round 2 talked about. Uh, they basically mean we're obviously definitely not going to see it by the end of November, but there is a chance that we may have it by the end of December. Talking, reading one of the, uh, the blog posts from Jamie Hood at Round 2, he says that the Chinese factory should have the uh, first container ship of the production samples leaving China by the end of November. That would essentially be within the next uh, two days as I'm recording this. Um, it takes about five weeks on the ocean to get it here and then just depends on how long it spends in customs. So there is a possibility we might see it by uh, December the 31st at distributors, but I would say more than likely we'll probably see it at the very beginning of January, maybe within the first week or two. But uh, that being said, the uh, the wait is going to be worth it. Um, and so what you can do, uh, those of you who are asking for gifts, just say, hey, give me a uh, gift card or a gift certificate at my major um, hobby retail vendor or a mail order firm, and that way I can order one of these, and you'll know they won't arrive too long after Christmas. Um, but uh, as I said, everything is fitting together very, very well, even on this model, which is a first generation test shot. Um, the one thing I can't emphasize enough is uh, definitely take your time when assembling it. I mean, you've got the makings here of a very, very good model, but this is definitely not something you want to rush unless you've had a few Eagles, built Eagles under your belt. Um, this engine assembly especially. Consult your reference photos and uh, you'll end up with a well, definitely a museum quality piece that's better than any other eagle that's ever come out. Well, that's all I've got for right now. Um, just want to say here's to a good Christmas season. Hopefully you'll, hopefully you'll buy a lot of kits. And uh, even though the Eagle Transport may not make it under the tree, you know you've got a good 2016 to look forward to. But the beauty of it is there's so much stuff that's been coming out of late that 
I'm sure you'll find something else to uh, spend your money on while you're patiently waiting for this model, or some of you impatiently. It's worth the wait, though. You're really going to like what you're really, really going to like what you see. Uh, hopefully, next time, my next video uh, will have the model pretty much in a mocked up assembled state. Um, for this next week I'm going to focus on the leg pods. I've got a way to uh, try and give them the uh, the spring loaded mechanism which uh, I won't be able to do it with the factory springs because uh, round two doesn't have any to spare but I think I've got a way to do it to uh, make my landing feet spring loaded. Um, but uh, hopefully it will be also in primer the next time you see it and maybe with the uh, command module completely done we'll have to see. I've got a few other things that I'm having to work on at this uh, time of year but this is the main one I want to see get done. I want this to be my last model of 2015 or at least one of my last models. So, but in any event Thank you for watching.